the Florida Writer Podcast, a discussion about writing and other things. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. And today, I am lucky enough to be with CJ Juliao. CJ, could you please give us a 60-second elevator pitch about who you are and what you write? Uh, I would love to. Uh, thank you for having me on. Um, so I'm Cesar Juliao, or CJ, as I like to go by usually. Um, and I'm a newly published author that uh, my first work is a thriller mystery, uh, more closer to like horror-ish kind of genre, but not super scary or nothing like that, more of a thriller mystery. Um, and then I'm also working on like a fantasy sort of series. So, you know, I'm just sort of dipping my toe in the water, but I've been writing for since I was a little kid. It's always been a passion of mine, and I'm actually starting to live out the dream of being a writer. (laughs) CJ, what got you started with writing? So writing for me was always a form of escapism. It was always my healthy coping mechanism uh, growing up and, you know, struggling through various hardships in life. I would always turn to writing because As a writer, you feel like you have some sort of control over something when life is out of your control. So it was always nice for me to have something to go to where I feel like, you know, I can escape to a world that I can create where I enjoy being in. And it's just stuck with me ever since. So you enjoy controlling your world. Let's talk about the type of characters that you create. Uh, wow. Um, I create all sorts of characters. Um, I have characters that I love, characters that I don't care for too much, but I, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, I guess, I guess the main type of character that I like to create are morally gray characters, because I find those types to be the most interesting. I like when a character has a concept of, I feel like what I'm doing is right. And it may seem right in the grand scheme of things, but their way of going about doing it is not necessarily right to most people. So it kind of creates like a dialogue like, is this person right? Are they wrong for what they're doing? Or, you know, creates that conversation. Well, life is very gray. I will give you that. (laughs) What do you have for an overall goal with your writing? So I want my writing to be what media has always been for me is like a way of entertaining, but also a way for people to not have to think about reality or think about stressful things or the real world. I just want people to be able to come to my writing and be told a story and hopefully enjoy it. And, you know, just give people a, a, a moment of a break from reality and just kind of stimulate their minds a little bit at the same time with, hopefully them catching on to deeper meanings that I have in my works. What do you think would be the deepest meaning that you would go for? So a lot of, I guess uh, with my current uh, series, uh, there's like a, there's a lot of, there's a big growing up uh, thing of it, like a coming of age sort of uh, thing behind it. And also, too, just a lot of things that challenge how we perceive certain things in life, like how we perceive certain actions, maybe like obviously to like an exaggerated extreme in in my stories. But if you if you take a look at it's hard to go into it without spoilers, but there's certain things that like. It might be exaggerated, but stuff like this that I write about does actually happen, and I try to bring certain issues to light in a way that kind of challenges social norms almost. So describe your ideal audience. I'm curious. Uh, My ideal audience would be people around my age, like maybe 20s, like early 20s, late 20s, like around that age. Um, I I have noticed that as I've written, my writing has grown with me. So I feel like every time I get, as I get older, my writing also gets older with me. So I try to have my audience or like my target audience be people around my age because I feel like I can speak to people around my age a little bit better but also too I feel almost anybody except like kids would be able to take in and enjoy my work and understand it would you consider your work since you're in your 20s uh, 
new adult? Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say that a lot of the rhetoric, a lot of the characters' ages and stuff are basically around new adult age. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the way they talk is, you know, a lot younger. They don't talk like super sophisticated or fancy or anything like that to where it would be like Shakespearean or anything. But, you know, they I try to keep them relatable to, you know, the average person. If so, your writing's evolved as you have grown as an author and if you think about going back to some of your early works that, that when you first started, do you notice that the audience for that would be the younger crowd? Or do you think it's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, when I go back to my old stuff, I, I read it and I'm like, this is, like, cringy teenage fan fiction. Like, <laughs> this is just... I, I am not proud of some of the older stuff that I've written. However, I will say... I have kept a lot of characters that I've had since I was younger, and I I have them with me now for future stories that I'm going to be working on. And they have definitely evolved themselves as characters as I've gotten older. Well, what a great way to do a character profile. So you're able to take those characters, and as they've grown up, you've grown up, and they've matured. Yep, so, all right, exactly. I'm just going to I'm gonna throw out a scenario, like, I guess... Let's just say you were 20 and you were putting a character together and now this character is is 28. Does he have a job? What's he what's he doing? What's uh what's the angst in his life? Uh well, I guess the main difference would be uh I would look at myself for where I'm at in life and kind of sort of reflect that in into the character. So like I guess a good example would be like as a teenager, I would write a character that was like a lone wolf kind of, kind of like to themselves and have very many friends. But then as I got older and then, you know, I started being more social myself, I would make that character be more social also and, and have a group of friends that they trust and rely on and feel like they can turn to. And, and they'll just be a more positive person, which I've actually done with one of my characters is when I went through stuff as I was younger, they I kind of projected that onto that character but then now that character has grown from all that and will be a lot better, I feel like, once I get them onto paper. <laughs> I think this is really a fun conversation. I, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit older than in my 20s. I have kids <laughs> in my 20s, but I can think about how they've grown up. And if I were to take their stories from when they were kids to stories of now, when I watch them as adults, I really can think about how they've evolved and how their friend groups have evolved and their mm -hmm. language has evolved and their mannerisms have evolved. I, I think it's really fun. It's a really fun way to envision a character because why not? These people have been with you your whole life as characters grow with yeah. us as well. <laughs> exactly. And and I feel like it's a good way when, when you put your a little bit of yourself into your characters, I feel like your audience will see them as more relatable because they'll have those human elements to them and people will be able to connect to those elements and be like, oh yeah, I remember when I was like this too or things like that. Do you do anything to your writing that would make it appealing for someone who's a little bit outside the new adult genre? Um, well, yeah, uh, possibly. I will say um, a lot of my writing is inspired by music. So if uh, either it, it could be like based on a character themselves that's based on a song or like a character situation that's based on a song so it's kind of one of those things like if you know the song that the character is based on or their situation is based on then it'll be like oh i see where they might have gotten inspiration from and also too i i take a lot of inspiration from either places i've been or like various interests that i've amassed over the years because i i i, I dabble in like a little bit of everything. I always try to do like research on th things that I find interesting. So, for example, I have a story about tarot cards. So, if people are interested in tarot cards, then they'll know all about that stuff. And if they've been to certain locations, then especially in Florida, because like I have uh, the same the tarot card story is based on Saint Augustine in Florida. So, if anybody's ever been there, they'll see the inspiration there. But so, yeah, I, I feel like anybody can enjoy what I write for sure. All right, let's go back to music. You piqued my curiosity. I did write a <laughs> short story one time based on a Jimmy Buffett song, and I just brought one of his characters that he had had in a song. 
to life in oh, my <laughs> own short story. Um, and if you didn't know the song, you wouldn't be clued in that it was like based on a song. But if you knew the song, it was definitely easy to figure out which <laughs> song it was. That I don't know if that's um, copyrightable. <laughs> <laughs> I never published it. I just wrote it for class. But nonetheless, <laughs> was, I, I never tried to publish it. I thought I might get in sort of some sort of trouble. But um, I, so I'm curious, you you use songs as inspiration for characters. I'm assuming in a similar manner that I did. Um, not so much where like I take a character from a song, but more like I take the idea of the song and make that into a character or make that into the, the whole story or make that into a situation in a book. So are you focused on the lyrics? Are you also using some of the the melody in the background? Both. Uh, so I listen to this song and then I write out whatever I want to write out. And then I see what part of the lyrics I feel relate to the actual story itself. Because so, when I listen to music, it, it plays out like like a like a music video almost in my head. And I take and I see my characters reacting to whatever they're doing, but like just with that music in the background, and it it just seems to fit and relate perfectly to uh the situation at hand. Sounds like a really good way to get over writer's block. Oh yeah, it does. Like I always have music playing. I can't not have music right when I'm writing. So if there's some really dramatic. Uh theme music in the background does that come into the the story oh yeah yeah definitely for sure like i, I even almost i almost picture it like an actual movie and i i, I always think of because i always i always write the endings of my stories first because i feel like the ending is the most impactful part of a story so i always think of like a end credit song that i would have if this was a movie <laughs> all right so we start with the end in mind and then we go back do you work backwards at that point or do you ha walk me through how that happens yeah so so i always think of the ending first and i think how do i want to get to this ending specifically and i'll think of like major impactful parts that can lead to that ending and then i just sort of work from there and then sprinkle in all the details from that point so i envision like the big major impactful moments and then i just figure out how can I get from this point to this point to ultimately end up at this point that I want? Is it all going from backwards, like from the ending to Pretty the middle much, to the beginning? I, yeah, like I always had. Yeah, the big, beginning is always the hardest part for me. Like I, I have so much trouble starting <laughs> a story. But once once I get my groove going, then it's pretty much easy for me from that point. But I always love the endings because I always think about myself whenever like I watch a show or a movie or something. And I always think like the ending is what always sticks with me. The ending is with the part that I always think about. Are your books longer? Are they short so, stories? So the one that I have published now, The Manor, it's it's a shorter story. Uh, the reason being is because you're supposed to read it and then you go back and reread it and you see how everything connects. Because while you're reading it, I'm dropping in little hints and little foreshadowings of what's going on and what's going to happen. And then you read the ending and you're like, oh, wait, you go back and you're like, oh, so this is why this was this way. This is why this is how this leads up to this. And I'm constantly kind of giving you that cat and mouse game, giving you the hints and putting everything in there for you. But it's just up to you to, like, figure it out. So it's Clue in a novelette form. Kinda. You're you're basically going along this ride with the main character who's also trying to figure out what's going on. Very cool. Very cool. Putting all those twists and turns and everything in there. Oh yeah, hints. I love that's... twists. Twists <laughs> is like my that's like my favorite thing. <laughs> well, right now the Olympics are going on and I'm thinking about all those people that do all that twisty stuff. You know, we have the gymnasts <laughs> and the skateboarders and the the divers. They're all doing these twisty things. You know, it's like it it's um your brain really has to embrace the twist. Oh, yeah. No, definitely for sure. <laughs> and then what, what do you envision for your writing career? You're a young man starting out. Uh, I just want to 
be able to tell all the stories that I have to share. I just want to be able to get all these characters and everything just out of my head and onto paper because they can get very annoying when they want to get out there. Like I'll tell you that much. <laughs> when they're constantly just yapping in your head, and it's like, oh, and like, oh. Especially when you have more than one story idea in your mind and it's just like one thing at a time. <laughs> now, how do you keep them organized? I don't. I just sort of have everything memorized already. And like I said, with music, depending on what song I'm listening to, I know what story that relates to. And it'll, I'll just have that playing in my head. So maybe you've done this with the manner, but consider putting a playlist in there uh, at the end of a book. Actually, you know, I would love to do something like that because I do have a specific song for the manor that perfectly summarizes the dichotomy between two of the characters, the most important characters in that story. You want to share or is that a secret? Uh, Yeah, no, no. It's called the name of the song is called Sin Injustice by the band Vamps and Apocalyptica. And or a song I'm familiar with, but it sounds like a really cool title. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, and my, my favorite part of the song is the last few lines of the song where they say there is a sin in every win and every loss. True justice lives within. And those last words can relate to either one of uh, the two characters, uh, Serenity or Felicity, depending on how you interpret who wins and who loses. And you can interpret it either way based on the ending. That sounds really intriguing. I am definitely going to go have to check it out. CJ, how can people get in touch with you? Um, I do have an Instagram page. It's uh, fallen underscore chaos underscore writing. Uh, that's pretty much the main social media that I use. Uh, I also have a Facebook uh, with the same name. Um, I don't really use that one as much. So mostly Instagram is how you would uh, get a hold of me. Because you're in your 20s and that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Even though I'm not the best at it. I like I'm always online. I just I just don't post as much as I should. <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm like I said, I'm I'm a bit older. And when social media was first on the scene, I was teaching at a community college and I went to a uh, a lecture on how to be a better professor. And they suggested that we either join MySpace or Facebook. They suggested <laughs> Facebook because MySpace seemed to be a little bit more like beta versus VHS. And <laughs> if you are even old enough to remember that, but nonetheless, I, I picked Facebook. And then of course my kids started getting older. So it was great. I could see what they were doing. And then they were like, uh, yeah, no, we don't want to be here anymore. Cause you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, hey, um, super glad you're on Instagram. And I would like to say, are you ready to switch to our rapid fire questions? I'm, I'm ready. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, CJ, what's a fun way to answer everyday questions like, how's it going? Or what do you do? Uh, well, actually, it's funny that you say that because my response to whenever like my family would ask, oh, how was school? I would just say same as usual. <laughs> whenever they ask, oh, how how's work? Same as usual. And then they're always like, what is the usual? You never told us the usual to begin with. <laughs> so I think that would be my answer to everything. It's just eh, same as usual. <laughs> that's a good point, though. If they don't know what usual is, they, they can't really <laughs> decide if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> All right. If someone asked you to be your apprentice and to learn everything you know, what would you teach them? I would teach them that I'm still learning myself and that learning is, is basically a journey of finding yourself. And, and there's a quote that I always liked. It's uh, an intellectual improvement arises from leisure by Samuel Johnson. And I feel like that really attests to knowledge in general. Like if you want to learn something, if you truly want to acquire how to do something or like a, a passion that you might have, I you just got to take the time for yourself to actually do it. Like, yeah, you can have a teacher, but you'll only really get the grasp of something by 
indulging it on on your own free will, like your own time. Great advice. Final question. If your five-year-old self suddenly found themselves inhibiting your current body, what do you think they would do first? Uh, (laughs) They would probably panic at all the responsibilities that I have. What do you mean I have to sweep? (laughs) Go to work? Why? I don't want to go to work. I want to play. Yeah, exactly. Can I take a nap now? Oh man, it's actually funny because as a as a kid I was very averse to sleeping, but now I I cherish it. Ah uh, yes, yes, yes. Well, CJ Julia, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. It was great being on here. Did I say your name right again? Julio. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm used to it. That, that's why I usually just go by CJ. It's it's easy. <laughs> well, all right. I am so glad you've been able to stop by. Thank you very much for having me. It was a great pleasure. You have been listening to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. Allison out. Cesar has always been someone lost in his own imagination. Where others around him are usually grounded in reality, his mind constantly wanders to various worlds and universes that live within his mind. He's always had the knack for grabbing glimpses of these worlds and bringing them to life in stories he would tell and share with others who would enjoy every bit of it. Caesar has had the great opportunity in being able to publish his first of many works, hoping to share his stories with a wide audience and provide entertainment and a way to expand others' minds in the realm of imagination. For more information about CJ, visit him on Instagram at fallen underscore chaos underscore writing. Learn, network, and grow at the 20th Annual Florida Writers Conference, October 14th through 17th, 2021. The Florida Writer Youth Conference, October 16th, 2021. Supercharge your writing career at the 20th Annual Florida Writers Conference. Until next time.